And welcome back to 30 at 6 on Cecil TV. I'm Allison Donnelly. And I'm Rob Churnside. And could you guess what my costume is? I don't know. Are you a cowboy? Very good, Allison. <laughs> now, you must be Roseanne? No, Rosie the Riveter. Rosie the Riveter. <laughs> we still allow her on TV. Good. Welcome to our Halloween episode of 30 at 6. And how about those flowers? They're beautiful, and and thank you for reminding me that we have our second Good Neighbor um, recognition to award um, to Brookbend Interiors, who is giving away flowers today from the Elkton Florist. So we have beautiful flowers for the studio tonight. So thank you. And they smell good. They're not they're not overpowering the smell of that. Oh, hey, that, Allison. That you hay. Last... So that's hay. Yes, you asked last week the difference between hay and straw. That's hay, and I happen to bring a sample of some straw. And what is the difference? The straw I mean, and hay I got from our good neighbor of the week last week, Zartler's Farms mm -hmm. on Red Toad Road. Straw, as you see, is yellow, and it has no uh, vegetable matter to it other than mm -hmm. just stalk. It's when they cut the straw, the oats, the barley, and the wheat. Right. It lays about that high, and then they cut it. This hay, for example, is grown to be cut off at ground level is what uh, Farmer Zartler told me. And it's got uh, alfalfa and clover and orchard grass and stuff like that. That's oh. what they cattle eat. Right. That's what they, the, the straw they lay down and bed got in. It. It's one of the components of scarecrows. Right. For Halloween. Right. So, um, there's some stuff coming up. That you More good talk neighbors. About. You know, we I really enjoy recognizing good neighbors. There's so many good neighbors out there in Cecil County. I know. Uh, unheralded, so we're going to try and bring them to your attention out there in TV land. And uh, maybe if you have a good neighbor that you want to recognize, please email us at our info in at Cecil.tv. That would be great because uh, it's all about you, Cecil County TV and the world. Yes. So, right here in Cecil County, there is a food distribution event at the Help Center at Cecil County DSS Help Center on High Street in Elkton. Thursday, November 8th, that's next week, 11 to 2. So they're not going to open early, but if you know somebody that needs food and all kinds of stuff that they give out, a lot of good food, go down there. That's great, and that's sponsored by the Maryland Food Bank. Correct, correct. Great. A lot of hungry people out there. Yeah, and it's getting cold. It's never a good time you to be You can't survive on Halloween candy alone. That's true, that's true. <laughs> Unfortunately, you can't. And now for the news. Today marked the fifth day of early voting in Maryland. You can still vote early through Thursday, November 1st, between the hours of 10 a.m. and 8 p.m. If you're not registered and you want to vote, you may register and vote on the same day when you go to early vote. In Cecil County, there's only one polling place during the early voting period, and it is the Cecil County Administration Building. Of course, if you can't get to the polls by Thursday of this week, you can still vote on Tuesday, November 6th. If you don't know your polling place, you can go online to elections.maryland.gov. Daylight savings time comes to an end this Sunday, November 4th at 2 a.m., so remember to turn your clocks back one hour. This means you'll get one extra hour of sleep, but that the days are getting shorter. What are you doing with all that extra Halloween candy? This year, Rodek Dental Arts in Elkton has teamed up with Soldiers Angels, an organization which hosts an annual collection drive for excess Halloween candy. Soldiers Angels ships the candy to deployed service members around the world for a sweet treat from home. Rodek Dental is an official drop-off site for Halloween candy, so you can drop off extra candy during regular office hours, Monday through Thursday from 8 to 5 p.m. and Friday from 8 to 2 p.m., now through November 9th. Don't let those sweets go to waste. Help Rodek Dental reach its goal of at least 100 pounds of candy. And now, a word from our sponsors. Hi, I'm Dr. Sam Charles. For 30 years, I have been practicing functional medicine and gentle chiropractic. Elkton Chiropractic Neurology is dedicated to enhancing whole body rejuvenation. Whether or not you are afflicted with injury or disease, we utilize a structural, neurologic, metabolic, nutritional, and energetic approach to restoring your body to its full potential. After coming to Dr. Charles, I'm better than I was before. You deserve to feel good and to have an active lifestyle, so why not call Elkton Chiropractic Neurology today? <laughs> Oh no, the furnace is on the fritz again! This time I'm calling the moon. 
Wow, he's here already? At your service! There you go! Mission accomplished! Ah, our house is nice and warm again. Thanks, Moon Man. You're awesome! You're welcome! Just go to moonairinc.com! Welcome back to 30 at 6. I'm here with Doris Benke from the University of Maryland Extension Cecil County office. Doris, thanks so much for being here. Hi, thank you for asking me to come. Of course. So Doris is here today to talk to us about the lanternfly, which has arrived in Maryland. And so farmers and lots of other people who are concerned about the state's agriculture are on high alert. And Doris is here to tell us all about it. So can you... Tell us about lanternfly. Okay, well, first of all, um, I wanted to express the fact that I'm not a person who has done research with the spotted lanternfly. I'm basically uh, concerned about increasing the awareness mm -hmm. um, and educating people about this new invasive species that has now come into Maryland right. um, so that people can identify it and people can take action and we can um, stop the population from being established in Maryland. So why should people be concerned? Well, people should be concerned because this invasive species is not selective to any one plant or any one item. Uh, it can feed on many different plants and crops. Um, as a matter of fact, the Maryland Department of Ag um, has made it aware and has been educating people that there's 70 or so uh, crops and plants that it can affect. Mm -hmm. um, and the spotted lanternfly is a leafhopper. Even though when you see it in person, um, it looks like a butterfly. Yeah, it's When pretty. it's flying around, and it's very pretty. Um, and it's kind of concerning because it is so attractive. I'm afraid that people won't want to kill it. Right. But you have to realize that you can't judge a book by its cover. No. And just because it's so pretty That's a great point. does not mean that it's not going to be devastating to our environment, to our crops, and to the industry in ag. What does um, it do to crops? So the leafhopper... Um, has a mouth, uh, piercing mouth part that will pierce into tree trunks, uh, grape vines, other types of plants and stuff, and it uses its mouth part like a straw and it sucks energy and nutrients and things out of the plants and the crops. Right. So right now, um, you know, it's kind of late in the season for us to be worried about some of the crops that it affects uh, to a certain extent. Um, but not really, because it can still go in and pierce um, trunks of trees, uh, crops and vines and different things, and suck the nutrients out. So then that means for those plants that need to survive on that through the winter, which mm -hmm. is called like a winter hardiness, for them to use that energy to survive, that energy is not quite there anymore because some of it's been drained out, so to speak, because the leafhopper has extracted that through its mouth part. So they won't have as much energy to be able to survive through the winter and then have that, that push that's needed in the springtime mm -hmm. to start growing again, again because that energy gets used up. So they use up what they have and then they just collapse and they die. So the plants could be affected that way um, from them feeding on them. Right. So, no, so not only does it feed on plants and not just the fruit of plants but the, no. the entire plant, but it, it interrupts photosynthesis. Well, it can interrupt photosynthesis because um, when there's a large population of the spotted lanternfly um, around all in the plant, they have to excrete and go to the bathroom somehow. Mm -hmm. So they excrete this uh, clear, sticky, sweet like substance. Yeah. yeah, that's sticky. Um, that's can, it's called honeydew, mm -hmm. um, which can attract other insects that could possibly do harm to the plants. But when you're talking about the um, the mold and stuff, it the honeydew is a sweet stuff substance that then attracts and creates a mold. And this mold is what they call sooty mold. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a black covering that gets on top of the honeydew, which then creates a black layer on top of the leaves and the plant and stuff. So then it prevents the sun from being able to penetrate right. and it interrupts in the photosynthesis, which could have a negative effect as well. Right. That again prevents them from being able, the, the plants from being able to create energy that they'll need to mm -hmm. survive. So obviously it, it is understandable that farmers are on high alert of the lanternfly because it, if it is 
detrimental to their crops, it is detrimental to the local economy. So beyond recognizing that just because it's a pretty looking insect, um, we shouldn't be worried about it, what should people do? Well, for right now, um, Maryland Department of Ag and um, other agencies are recommend, recommending us to be looking for the egg casings mm -hmm. because right now is the time of year where they're laying their eggs uh, for next year and we want to break the life cycle. So right. if we can find the eggs, which is, um, it's going to be kind of hard because they're not really noticeable. They yeah. look odd. Um, they sort of look like someone has smeared some putty or some clay um, on things outdoors. and. Um, the spotted lanternfly likes to lay their eggs on smooth, somewhat smooth surfaces. Mm. So it could be anything outside. It could be your trash can, it could be your car, right. it could be a building, it could be a piece of equipment, anything like that. Um, so if you're out and about and you're walking around and you happen to see something that looks unusual, check it out. Take the time to check it out. Take some and pictures. Yeah. Um, Maryland Department of Ag is asking you that if you see something, egg casings, the instars, the nymphs, or, or the adult, any of those, any part of the life cycle, to take a picture of it, capture it and kill it, freeze it, put it in a Ziploc bag and freeze it, wow. and then okay. send it to them at their um, don'tbug.md at maryland.gov. So if you see some of the egg casings, you're supposed to scrape them off into a Ziploc bag and zip it closed and stick it in the freezer. Okay. And make sure that, you know, nothing's moving, that, you know, of course they're eggs, but nothing's moving at any point in time before you send a specimen um, to the Maryland Department of Ag. Okay. So don't bug .md at maryland.gov. Yes. Okay. Yes. Well, thank you so much, Doris. This has been incredibly informative. You're welcome. Thank you. And now, 30 at 6, back again from Cecil College, Elkton Station, Andrew and Kelsey to tell us about... Ten Fest. You just had a successful Beatles presentation show, right? The Beatles show was a blast, and uh, it was a lot of fun. And uh, we're just going to keep keep on uh, keep on rolling because we've got a lot of a lot more events um, for this semester as well. And the next one coming up is a great event that we're calling Ten Fest. Now we want to keep this week in a surprise. Uh, for you, but we can tell you a little bit about the event and kind of what we had going on last year. Uh, so, Kelsey? Sure, we had a lot of really great performances. Mm -hmm. um, I believe all of our scripts were locally written, mm -hmm. which was a fantastic surprise to us that we had so many local playwrights excited to be a part of the festival. Um, we had a combination of local directors as well as some former students who came back to the program to direct, which was wonderful. Um, our cast consisted of a beautiful array of college students as well as local community members, some people who were performing for the first or second time, and some people who have been performing for 20 or 30 years in the area. And so it was a, a wonderful learning experience for everyone, and it resulted in a really fantastic collection of performances. They were very entertaining to watch. Um, and very varied subject matter as well. Mm. We had some, some funny ones that were ridiculous. I mean, they were just <laughs> hilarious pieces and, for and the some that were much more poignant. Ten Fest is actually 10 minute presentations. Right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you're going to have a variety of things. Uh, we have 10 minute, uh, some 10 minute plays or 10 minute scenes or maybe 10 minute monologues mm -hmm. um, and then 10 minute music presentations. And um, and you never know what's going to happen because, you know, th there might be someone with a secret hidden talent, you know, that just shows up that they can they can uh, do something. And um, it's, it's a great event. Uh, the audience really gets to see a lot of variety. And for the students, honestly, like they get a great experience because um, they get time on stage, uh, they get time backstage, uh, they get time um, directing, you know, and um, just the, the students have a great time and you really um, get to see them develop, especially the, the new students, you really get to see them develop um, during this uh, first semester. And then the ones that are, uh, that are, that are, that are returning students um, as well as alumni. Um, uh, it's really interesting to see how uh, they bring their own ideas um, to TenFest as well and, right. and what, um, you know, how, how they want to create their own moments, I think. And again, I guess that's uh, at Elkton Station, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And uh, November? Second and third. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this is also um, part of what, what we call the Falling Leaves Festival. And um, the Falling Leaves Festival, uh, you probably have an uh, interview with somebody uh, getting into more detail about that. Um, but uh, it's another music and arts festival um, that's going on uh, all day Saturday. 
And uh, you know, so if you come out and you can spend some time at the festival, um, you can go around and see uh, some great artwork, hear some great music at the festival, and then stick around for the night and you'll uh, get to see TenFest. Um, so it's a great big music and arts weekend. November 2nd and 3rd? Yes. There's a cost, right? Um, yeah, there's a cost. Uh, you can either see the, uh, you can come to the festival um, and uh, part of it's included in the festival price. Uh, or you can just come to Ten Fest uh, just by itself, um, and it's a fifteen dollar ticket. Um, well worth it. There's always <laughs> there's always uh, stuff for kids to do as well. Mm -hmm. um, I, uh, I think it, we'll probably have it again this year, but last year there was a big uh, uh, moon bounce for the mm -hmm. kids to play on, and uh, it was just a blast, you know. And yeah, so it's a great weekend. Um, it's a great music and arts weekend um for uh over at elkton station so hopefully everyone come out and enjoy ten fest and the following leaves festival sounds great cecil right. tv may be there all right hope so <laughs> thank you both yeah thank, thank you. you good evening and welcome back to 30 at 6. i'm hannah rodenbaugh here with heidi anderson from the cecil county pregnancy center nice to meet you thanks me for too. having thanks me. for being here so tell us a little bit about the pregnancy center what do you do there so i'm a bilingual peer counselor um, so I'm fortunate enough to be able to help clients in Spanish and English. We have three locations. We're in Elkton Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday on High Street. And then I am in the new Cecilton location at um, Grace Baptist Church on Main Street on Wednesdays. On Thursdays, I am at Northeast Methodist Church, on, also on Main Street Northeast. Um, so we do parenting classes. Um, we make sure clients have doctors for themselves, for their children, and if not, we refer them out to other agencies and help them schedule appointments, um, refer them to other programs in the community, such as like Stop Smoking program, GED program, and stuff like that. Our parenting program is mainly videos and um, different educational books and pamphlets. So we're having an upcoming fun run to try and update a lot of that material. Okay. So um, the run is called the Diaper Dash Fun Run. The Diaper so Dash Fun Run. You mentioned that you're looking for materials and funding for parenting materials. Is there anything else that you're looking well, for? Well, we're always looking to fill our boutique. Um, one of the fun ways to repay our clients and kind of boost, you know, their morale. They come in, they do their parenting classes, they feel good about the education they're receiving and then also they earn baby bucks. They go into the boutique and it's all brand new. Mm -hmm. So there's clothes and diapers and wipes and jackets. We have churches that donate beautiful crocheted blankets and um, jackets, all kinds of beautiful things in the boutique. So we'd be able to buy more things when it runs low, when we're not receiving donations. Um, so the funding would go towards that, and of course, you know, to update all of the educational tools that we use. So you mentioned a couple locations around the county. Uh, who is your program available to? Anyone that's in need, I mean, or someone that just needs parenting classes. They don't have to be, you know, poverty stricken or anything like that. We have, I have grandmothers that are now being mothers again to their grandchildren who, you know, times change, things change, they need reminders. Mm -hmm. I have very young teen moms who have no idea how to be parents and I like to come alongside of them and without judgment be a listening ear and help them become great parents. So the fun run is taking place in Meadow Park. It starts at Meadow Park at 9 a.m. on November 10th. Okay. And how can someone who's interested get registered for the event? They can, uh, we have a Facebook page. So they can uh, get on our, the Cecil County Pregnancy Center Facebook page. They can register up until the 9th, the night before. Mm -hmm. Or they can um, register November 10th that morning at Meadow Park. 
Um, registration will be between 8 and, of course, the run starts at 9 a.m. Okay. So it would um, leave from Meadow Park and go Delaware Avenue and then loop back around. It's a fun run. It's just under a 5K. Okay. And is there a registration fee? The registration fee, which all the proceeds would go to the pregnancy center, is $25. And um, the runners would receive a long sleeve t-shirt, diaper dash t-shirt, of course. Great. So the, once again, the fun run is taking place at Meadow Park on Saturday, November 10th, beginning at 9 a.m. And you can head to the Facebook page? The Cecil County Pregnancy Center Facebook page. To yes. find out more about that. Thank you for being here, Heidi. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. And now, 30 at 6, welcome Terry McFarlane with the Cecil Chapter of Disabled American Veterans. <laughs> How you doing, Rob? I'm doing great, and you're going to tell us about an event that is endorsed by me with those four letters that I love so much. What's, right. what's happening? We're uh, having a raffle for the disabled American veterans uh, in Golden Corral on the day after Veterans Day, which is November the 12th. Uh, so that's Monday, right? This coming Monday. As, as Monday, yes. Awesome. Yes. So. You, with the Cecil Chapter of Disabled American Veterans, yes. are going to have a raffle of all kinds of stuff at Golden Corral. At the, Golden. the stuff will be there at Golden Corral in Elkton, Elkton right? Right. Well, everything, but we're, we're raffling off a color TV, which is 50 inches. And I don't, I don't think we're going to have that there, but we're, we'll have, what we're doing is taking uh, uh, people to have to sign their names, and uh, we will call them when if they are the winners of it. Okay. And, they can come and pick it up from there. Yes. So it's it's real easy. You go to Bell Hill Road. Bell right? Hill Road, yes. By Flying J? Uh, at Flying J, it's at uh, Golden Corral and Flying J are con together there. Okay, and those four little letters that I love so much are A-U-C-E, right? A they have a, a buffet? A-U-C-E, A-U-C-E. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. <laughs> so you go there and do one of my favorite things is load up, uh -huh. get two or three, four, five plates of Good food from Golden Corral for yes. three to seven. Three to seven. Well, three to seven. The on, on uh, November the twelfth is from five to nine. Okay. But three to seven is what we're doing up until that's that's uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. The DAV will be at Golden Corral uh, selling raffles and, and and everything. But the actual oh, okay. day of the raffle will be November the twelfth. Okay, and that'll be at Golden Corral. At Golden Corral, yes. But people could get tickets be before all that. weekend. All weekend, yes. Yeah. Yes. So maybe go to Golden Corral a couple of times. Go, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. I, I, I'm glad you brought this to our attention. Let's dig a little deeper, Terry, and talk to us about disabled American veterans in the Cecil chapter. You have meetings on a regular basis? We have meetings uh, the first Thursday of each month from 5.30 to 6.30, uh, we try to keep it within an hour. Uh, and it's at on, on uh, High Street, there at the, at the VFW on High Street. Okay. And uh, In Elkton? In Elkton, yeah. yes. So your mission, basically, is to help uh, veterans uh, and their families, right? Our mission is to uh, uh, help Veterans fill out application, a claim, a claim for uh, uh, an injury or whatever they may have had. Right. And uh, we have a free, it, it is a free professional assistance in helping them fill out their claim. So again, I want to reiterate this. Raffle, Golden Corral, Bell Hill Road, Flying J. Yes. All you can eat. All you can eat. Yes. Yeah, it's so a wonderful it's meal and the camaraderie, you get there to, to uh, mingle with fellow veterans and their families, yes. And that, 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 the drawing is 5 to 9 on Monday the 12th? On Monday the 12th, yes. So I'm getting hungry. Yes, me so too. Did, did we miss anything, Terry? No. Yeah, we, we, the only thing is uh, for knowing where to get in, in touch with me. If someone needs to get in touch with me, uh, they, they can uh, contact the Disabled American Veterans at P.O. Box 446 at Perryville, Maryland. Now again, that's P.O. Box 4, 446 
at Perryville, Maryland. And that's straight from the commander. I'm the commander of the DA. Terry McFarland. Yes. Thanks, sir. Thank you, sir. And now in honor of Halloween. Happy Halloween, everybody. Main Street Elkton had the scarecrows all up and down Main Street, and they had an award given to the winning scarecrow on Main Street Elkton. Handy Andy and family provided by the Housing Authority. This goes out to Elkton and all the scarecrows and all you Halloween people out there. Well, I was out in the garden when the moon was high. Lord, I saw some shaking all across the sky. It was a funny looking lady She was pointing at me Saying come and join the party You can dance with me It was a funny looking people Dressed in raggedy clothes Lord I stumbled on the sun But I just didn't know Said look out Ha <laughs> ha! 